What's up guys, it's Gaz. Welcome to the Warframe video. So we're doing another Kuva weapon video for you today, and we have a non-gun for this one. We actually have the Kuva hammer. Uh, I call it the hammer of the liches. It's the Kuva shield egg. So let's quickly go over this thing, and we're going to have some mission gameplay as well in here. Uh, and yeah, this thing is actually really good, but it might not be worth it to everyone to have it fully maxed out, because there's some other options that are probably just going to be more beneficial if you're not looking to have multiple hammers with tons of form on them. So, let's go over these stats really quickly. So, keep in mind that this is the... They're showing the stats right here uh, without a elemental bonus. So, if you are to get a weapon like this, it's going to have an elemental bonus from a progenitor warframe when you kill a lich. Because these come from the liches. So, for example, I have 57% toxin on mine. So, that's 57% additional toxin damage from that base damage. So we have like about 200 damage base damage. That 57 is going to be roughly like a little bit over 100 extra base damage thrown on there. So it says on the wiki that it's got really low base damage compared to all the other hammers, but that's not taking into account the, the possible stat rolls you can get on this. And for this weapon, I would recommend either toxin or heat. Uh, you could try radiation. I definitely think that toxin or heat will be better on here, just with the way you're modding uh, weapon uh, elemental uh, builds on these melee weapons nowadays like getting more corrosive damage is nice being able to fit on corrosive and heat without having to put a heat mod in there is pretty nice uh for radiation it's got a good stash chance you might be just wasting your procs honestly um but if you want to try it out go for it like i said i have a 57 percent toxin roll um but looking at these stats we've got a relatively slow attack speed 31 percent critical chance which is pretty high uh the fragwar prime is 40 percent crit chance uh so it's, it's higher than this but the Fragwar Prime is most likely the, one of the top tier weapons in the entire game. So, yeah, keep that one in mind. 2.7 multiplier on crits. That's the highest crit multiplier of all hammers. So, pretty nice right there. 3 meter range. That is above average for hammers on range. So, all looking good. Uh, stash chance 27. It's acceptable. Um, unfortunately, the problem, one of the big problems here is that we have extremely low slash weighting. Uh, we've got impact and puncture. So... Even with all these high crit stats and these stash chances and stuff, this thing does not proc slash, like, at all. Like, ever. Like, I, I hardly ever see slash procs on this. So, that's something you're going to need to keep in mind. Uh, if you're looking for more of a slash-based hammer, the wolf sledge is most likely going to be your best bet there. Uh, so, yeah, let's just quickly show. Um, so, here it is right here, and I'm going to compare it to the Fragor Prime. So, as you see, the Fragor Prime has higher base damage um, overall roughly, and uh, we have slower attack speed on the Fragor Prime, and you definitely notice that slower attack speed, but honestly, for some reason, the Fragor Prime, like, you'll be at level, like, 400 enemies, it's gonna still, like, two-shot them, like, two hours into a survival, so, um, this thing is not gonna do that, it's just not, but, you know, I, have, I haven't actually brought this in a two-hour run in survival, to be honest, but I have brought the Fragor Prime multiple times, because I'm using that as a stat stick on Korra, so, um, and then comparing to some other hammers, we got the Wolf Sledge, which is pretty hard to get so this is something if you're looking for a slash build on a hammer this is most likely gonna be your best bet if you watch my old video from a long time ago we had a minus impact ribbon for the uh the wolf sledge and you, you have 33 percent status chance you're gonna be proc and slash like crazy on this but do keep in mind we have a 1.9 multiplier and a 17 percent crit chance of this so yeah uh, as far as stances guys and the build we have Crushing Ruin. I definitely recommend Crushing Ruin. This is basically the only stance, as far as I'm concerned, for hammers. Uh, it's got some good combos in there. And if you're not running a Riven, you can either run Prime Pressure Point in that slot, or you can run Condition Overload. On this weapon, I'd probably say you want to run... Uh, probably Prime Pressure Point. I mean, the way I've been modding things, I've been using a Riven on basically everything, so I'm just one-shotting every enemy I see, unless I'm going in a long survival. Uh, and even then, like, I'll probably be one-shotting them for quite a while since we'll have four corrosive projections. So, I'm going to be showing all this with a Riven, guys. It's a melee damage, attack speed, and critical chance Riven, so we're at 140% crit chance. Um, let's just show how it works on these guys really quick. Keeping in mind, this is not meant for these level 170 enemies at all. I do not use this in these situations. This is more of a level 50 to 100 weapon, in my opinion. So, uh, we've got... I'm going to show some of the, the combos as well. So, this is me just spamming the melee button. That's me blocking and pushing the melee button. It's a slime attack that has, like, a good radius. We did get some slash in here, thankfully. Um, but the main move I use is forward blocking melee. So this one right here. It goes for... It, it hit, the, the level you're swinging the hammer at, it's going to get some headshots on these enemies. Like, relatively uh, consistently. Um, and, yeah, it, lets you, it moves you forward. So you can, like, clear out, like, an entire room with this. 
So I use that a lot. The first two hits of the uh, forward hold combo on the hammers. Really, really easy to use. Really powerful. Like I said, go for the headshot since you're swinging the hammer at head level. And there is a headshot multiplier for melee. If you have like a, a bunch of enemies just chilling around you, you can do that move I was showing with the uh, the slam. This is it does good damage. It knocks enemies down as well. And those are the two main moves I'm using on this hammer stance. So the the moving forward, uh, like spin around combo, and then the kill everything around you combo. Uh, those are both really powerful. And I mean, we were, we definitely were not modded for those level 170s. Uh, this is more meant for like level like 110 and below, and like. We'll see. We'll probably take quite a few less hits to kill these guys. You keep on. We also have steel charge equipped. All right, so a little bit, a little bit better there. Won't even using the charge attacks. Um, yeah, like I said, the way I've been building things, guys, we're going for one shot builds where we one shot all the normal enemies. Uh, and when I say normal enemies, I even mean the enemies in like Kuva, uh, Kuva floods, Kuva lich missions, things of that nature. Um, and as far as synergies today, it's just the melee weapon. There isn't really much synergies. I've been using it with Wisp a lot because Wisp increases the attack speed. Um, and then spamming this with Wisp is hilarious. Like, if the enemies aren't dead after, like, two or three of those, like, something is very wrong. Um, yeah. So if you don't want to run Corrosive and Heat on here like I do right now, um, you actually have lots of options. Like, I put Heat in there because I felt like this build was working out really well. But you could honestly put, uh, you could put, some people like Blood Rush. I have not been enjoying Blood Rush recently because I, I don't like having to build my entire build around having my combo stacked up. Like, it just, it seems kind of productive to what's going on. I'm Like I said, I'm killing these guys in one hit without Blood Rush. And I'm never really getting above a 2x multiplier unless I'm in, like, some long run. So, instead of Molten Impact, you could run, like, Prime Fury. You could run Blood Rush. Uh, if you don't have a Riven, you could run Condition Overload in that slot. You could run Pressure Point, etc., etc. Like, there's lots of choices. Uh, and without this crit chance Riven, you're at 99.2 with Sacrificial Steel. So you're going to be basically critting every single time. So it's not going to be a huge uh, issue, I'd say. Um, yeah, we have some pros and cons here. I'm going to take you in some mission gameplay as well. I mean, it's a, it's pretty straightforward, guys. I mean, as far as like changing the builds around, you could maybe put... Um, you could put Quick Quickening as a, new, a mod that's pretty good nowadays. So you could maybe put that one on there. You could put on some more Attack Speed with Gladiator Might. You could put some more Crit Damage with Gladiator... Uh, you can put on the text with Gladiator Vice, you can put some more damage with Critical uh, Gladiator Might, which I have been doing. I actually took Gladiator Might off this build to fit on the Heat, and I think the Heat has been working out better. Um, also, Focus Energy if you want to do some charge attacks. Uh, yeah, it does has good damage on the charge attacks. 22,000 with our build currently. And that obviously gets multiplied by our 5.1 crit multiplier, uh, and because we have 100% crit chance. It's always going to be multiplying that. They are reducing it most of the time, but... Um, yeah, let's jump into some mission gameplay, and I'm going to take you over some pros and cons as well. Alright, this is a Kuva Flood solo. I mean, it's not super high-level enemies. They're, like, level, like, 80, so take it for what you will. This thing is, like I said, it's not meant to be, like, a maximum late-game, like, ultra-crazy weapon. It's more of, like, a uh, mid-tier level, enemy level kind of thing. Um, I was just showing some other options you could throw in there as well. I would probably just say put Condition Overlord where the Riven is and not where the, the Heated Charge was, but it's up to you. All these builds are going to work fine. Uh, the way that melee is nowadays, you can get away with a lot of different stuff, guys. So, Also, this is my Umber Wisp I'm using it on because I put Umber Form on Wisp. I think she's going to be really useful for the new war. So, She's also really good in Endless missions. I took her in a two-hour Endless uh, or two-hour uh, Kuva Survival the other day. Kuva Survival Fissure. By the way, Kuva Survival Fissure is the best mission in the game. Uh, prove me wrong. So yeah, here we are. We are in a sabotage mission, and it's the Corpus, and I have cor corrosive and heat. So it's not exactly optimal. Let's also show some pros and cons for this thing. So um, we've got great crit stats as a pro. It, it, like I said, it's got some of the best crit stats of all the hammers. Uh, and then innate base damage bonus. That is something that not pe enough people are taking into account. I think even the people on the wiki, they're like, this is the lowest base... I mean, they call it base damage, so I guess it's there. It's like, this is the lowest damage of the hammers, pretty much. But like, if you have a 60% toxin roll... And you, it's 200 damage at base. That's over That's over 300 damage at that point. That's almost as much damage as the Fragor Prime does per hit. And this thing attacks a lot faster than the Fragor Prime, has a higher crit multiplier than the Fragor Prime, but it does not have that built-in uh, initial passive where it's getting those 30 combo hits uh, right off the bat. So that's where the Fragor Prime's are just going to beat it because it's always going to have a 2x multiplier on the combo. But um, moving on, has good stash chance. 
you could even get 100% stash chance in this thing with four dual stats. I would not recommend that because you're going to be running Corrosive Blast or Radiation Viral in that case, uh, which is not exactly optimal. Um, and then good range for a hammer. Three meters at base, uh, and then like the other hammer with longest range, I think, is like the Wolf Sledge with like 3.1, which is weird, but you know, whatever. Uh, as far as the cons, the number one con is it's not the Fragor Prime. The Fragor Prime is just better. I'm going to do a video on the Fragor Prime very soon. But the general gist of it is it has this built-in passive where it always has like 30 combo hits going if you've hit somebody recently. So it also has 40% crit chance, which scales really well with crit damage ribbons, or crit chance ribbons. It scales with crit damage ribbons as well, for that matter. But um, yeah, and the, the charge attacks of the Fragor, like you can like two-shot a level like 200 plus Kuva Guardian uh, in, in those kinds of missions with the Fragor Prime. So... Yeah, it's extremely powerful, and this thing, it, it can do okay. It's good, more of a horde slayer, I'd say, because of the attack speed. Uh, if you're using the forward hold combo, you're going to be slaying multiple enemies per swing, getting those headshot uh, multipliers. And then, there we go, right there. We did the slam attack, it killed like three drones with one hit. Another con, low slash damage, we went over that. But, um, yeah, you're going to be proccing basically just elementals. With my 59% elemental roll, I'm proccing corrosive mostly all the time, so it's pretty nice. Um, and then a low stat roll will make this weapon weaker than other options. That is, that is the case. The people on the wiki were right for that one, where if you like have an impact roll on this hammer, it's going to suck. It's, it's just going to be garbage. So I would not recommend an impact roll or a magnetic roll for that matter, but basically everything else should be okay. Uh, and then, yeah, those are the pros and cons. I think this thing's mega underrated. People have been saying this thing sucks. I don't think it sucks. Uh, I do have a ribbon on it. I built everything with a ribbon. That is, that's just what you're signing up for when you watch this channel, guys. Everything's going to have a ribbon on it. I'll try to get non-riven builds out for the most part. I actually gave you some options for non-riven builds on this thing, but uh, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, if, if there's a weapon I'm using in Melee 3.0, it's going to have a riven on it. Uh, that's just how I how I play. I'm MR28. I, I've been at this point for like two years, so yeah. Uh, I'm, the weapons I use will be as powerful as I can make them, so. And I'm also not stacking up combo, because fuck that. Alright, so this mission's basically over. Um, we're trying to find the console. And yeah, guys, the Game Awards are tomorrow. There is lots of speculation that the Railjack will be uh, either released at at the Game Awards. They'll be like, all right, you can go play it now. Or they'll be like, we're releasing Railjack tomorrow on PC. Those are the two big theories right now. Is It's either going to be a Fallout Shelter kind of thing where it's like, you can go play this right now. And they'll like push out the red text as the announcement at the Game Awards happens. Which would be really hype because there'll be a good amount of people watching that. Or it will be... Uh, we're releasing it tomorrow on PC, and it will be a situation where it's like we're watching Steve stream for like two hours at like 2 p.m. on Friday, and they push out the update for like at like 4 or 5. That, those are like the two main things that will most likely happen for Railjack, but it is definitely looking like this week, guys. If you've been paying attention to Warframe Twitter, they've been like uh, preparing the Railjack launcher or some, some stuff like that on their Twitter feed. So, yeah. Looking forward to it. Uh, it's not gonna be standard Warframe gameplay. It's basically Star Fox, as far as I'm concerned. It's Star Fox and Sea of Thieves. Uh, which isn't a bad thing. I like Star Fox. I've, I like Sea of Thieves streams. I haven't really played it myself before. So, yeah, um, make sure you have a squad ready to go and your Railjack ready to go. Because I, even I need to do that. I need to find a squad for day one for Railjack if I'm gonna be playing it. Uh, getting some videos out for you guys. But we'll see. I think it'll be fun. I just, I hope, here's the thing. The rewards are important, guys. The rewards for Railjack are very important because if we're getting rewards that only influence the Railjack, I, I don't think it's going to have the legs to stand uh, as a game mode that people are wanting to farm and stuff like that. So if we're getting, like, new arcanes from it, if we're getting maybe new mods that you can use in normal missions, uh, great. That's really good. But it seems like we'll be getting, okay, well, this mission dropped you a Railjack ability. This mission dropped you some Railjack resources. Even during their dev stream, Steve's like to, to, to Rebecca, did you get anything good in that mission? She's, she looks at the loot, she's like, oh, I got a bunch of resources. And I'm like, oh no. Is that going to be us on day one, just getting resources instead of rewards? So, I, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I definitely know that there's lots of room that it could improve after the initial release. So let's, uh, let's try to be fair to it. Even though it is not really what the Warframe community wants... All of them. Some people will probably want this. So, Either way, guys, uh, I hope that you found this video helpful. I do think this thing is worth getting. I don't think it's worth a ton of plat. I'd say that the ribbons for it are maybe a little bit overpriced, but if you have a ribbon on this thing, it really will shine. Uh, I'd say Fragor Prime ribbons should definitely be higher value, and I don't know if that's the case right now. So, 
Um, Fragor Prime video very soon. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time. Please like, share, subscribe. Uh, Twitch channel is going to be up. I'm not streaming today because I have some other stuff to do. I also want to work on this video. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon, guys. Peace.